Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Upstart Live from PayU. I'm Mansa. I'm your host for the evening. I'm a part of the marketing team here at PayU. Uh, we Upstart is a series that we do. We bring in startup entrepreneurs like Vijay and Manas here. Uh, they are from Drink Prime. Before we go into that, Upstart is all about bringing in subject matter experts to talk about various topics for startups, for uh, operational purposes, anything that you require to get to understand to build your uh, startup better, right? Like the things you need to know. So in today's session, like I already introduced you, uh, we have Vijayender. We otherwise call him Vijay. He is the CEO and uh, co-founder at Drink Prime. We have Manas with us, uh, Manas Ranjan. Uh, he is he is also the co-founder and he's the COO at uh, Drink Prime. So we are here to talk about uh, scaling up your business from 100 to 1 lakh users, right? First of all, starting up is not easy. And scaling up is a whole different ballgame. And going from 100 to 1 lakh is, is challenging. Like, I can't talk about it because I myself am not an entrepreneur. That is why we bring two people who know what it is to build a business like that. So, uh, Vijay Manas, please go ahead, talk about a little. OK, uh, to, uh, to all of the audience, this is the second time we are bringing uh, Vijay and Manas on our platform. We really liked uh, the story that they stand for and their uh, their whole work ethics and and the way they built Ring Prime. And that is why we thought they were apt and they were uh, the perfect people to talk about scaling a startup. And they come from a hardware background, so it's another different story altogether, right? So uh, Vijay Manas, over to you. If you can just give like a two minute um, um, intro to all of this before we go into the questions. Yeah, so Mansa, thank you so much for having us. It's great to be back on the podcast. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'll start off with a brief history of Ring Prime, right? So uh, the journey sort of started uh, in about 2014 when Vijay and I were roommates and we were uh, we were looking at possibly uh, uh, how can we solve the problem of drinking water for people like us. To give you a little bit of a background, we both were not originally from Bangalore but came into the city for our career purposes, career and education and work purposes and we were users of bottled water those large 20 liter bottled water cans and there were we found a lot of irregularities with the bottled water the way it is managed delivered and consumed uh, consumed right uh, to give you a few uh, sometimes when we reached home late from office the water was dirty sometimes when we uh, sometimes when we were uh, uh, sometimes when we ordered the water can the guy simply would not deliver it to our home we had to lug the water can all the way up four or five floors to the place that we were staying and lifts in many times were non-functional sometimes the water inside uh, in, inside it was smelly sometimes the water can was dirty so all of this led to us uh, led to us thinking that is there more to it can there be a better solution to it and yeah the what started off with a simple experiment that hey let's make a simple app and possibly try out something as a hobby project during weekends that how can we make uh, uh, how can we uh, solve the problem of access to bottled water let's say the uh, evolved over the course of time into drink prime we today are the easiest safest and the most hassle free option for any urban indian family to get access to safe clean and healthy drinking water at their homes we are better healthier uh, more cost effective, more hassle free than any of the two options which the families use. Number one is buying, owning and maintaining a water purifier. Number two is obviously relying on bottled water cans. So yeah, and in terms of the scale, we currently serve a, a, a lakh users, proudly serve more than a lakh users across Bangalore, Hyderabad and the NCR region. Um, and we are growing at a fast pace month on month. So yeah, so that's a little bit in background about, uh, about us and the drink brand store. Sure, Manas. Yeah. Uh, Vijay, would you like to add anything more to this? Uh, Manas, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can. You're on mute. Uh, Vijay, you're on mute. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was in mute. I was in mute. Yeah, sorry. So uh, uh, most of it Manas has covered. So it, it has been a fabulous journey for us. Uh, I mean, just that it took seven years for us to reach here uh, because since there are a lot of elements to hardware and a lot of, uh, it's a real world product, right? So uh, every day scaling up is a different ball game altogether. So uh, basically, I mean, uh, the, the whole point what I wanted to mention is uh, we are growing rapidly, but yeah, uh, it, it's been a difficult journey and 
there were so many times where in the whole journey where we had to start again evolve completely from the time where we were right so that was the what was one of the major learnings where it was as an entrepreneur for us a big learning because we have to unlearn things which you have learned and relearn new things right so that was a that was a beautiful journey and it, it was it was cool uh, to to come and reach here and growing so rapidly now very nice to hear that from both of you so going to the questions right um, given its scale up so we have to talk about growth at the early stages so you said you started drink prime somewhere in 2016 so how many subscribers did you have then at that moment so who were they and how did you build upon your product from there so obviously what you offered to your initial subscribers is not the product right now because it always grows so who were your first few uh, subscribers how many were they and what was how has your product evolved over the last few years yeah so for me to answer that right i will need to take you a little bit back to those years between 2014 and 16 where like i told you we were solving the problem of access to bottled water at people's homes now as we were solving the problem we uh, i mean uh, we were both in a full time jobs where i was working in sonata software vijay was at amd and uh, we started it off as a hobby project during the weekends we used to stand on uh, a stand on crossroads distribute flyers have a few interesting stories around that where one time uh, i knocked on a home which used the which was of a senior colleague of mine and yeah <laughs> so uh, and one time we just gave a fly to his boss so those things are there and yeah so so uh, the background is we understood the problem very deeply at that point in time we had more than 5000 families who were dependent on us for their bottled water needs uh, so which was a big number uh, but at the same point in time if we came to a conclusion after multiple trial and error that no matter what we do delivering bottled water to people's homes will never be a sustainable large and effective solution to solving drinking water and that's when we decided to pivot and we formed the company uh, formed or officially formed the company rather in 2016 So we started off with a clean slate, zero subscribers. The years between 2016 to 2018 was sort of to internalize everything that we knew knew about the consumer, uh, and in, and it was not very difficult because we ourselves, I mean, the the way this company started was to solve a personal pain point. How can we solve a pain point that both of us were facing, as well as most of our friends and peer group was facing? Uh, uh, and then uh, yeah, so the years uh, we took two years to internalize the problem. to get a little bit deeper into water purifiers as such we knew that water purifiers in india has a very low penetration which means water purifiers are present in about 5% households compared to about 40% households who own a refrigerator and 70 75% households who own a uh, who own a television set so obviously it's a very underpenetrated category and it not not really grown as fast as we would want to since it's a essential commodity over the last 20 years but having said that the substitutes of water purifiers like let's say uh, water atms or like let's say bottled water penetration in india have seen a significant rise in the last decade so that led us to start thinking that uh, the, uh, that sort of led us to start th- uh, thinking that uh, what is the right form of solution uh, of delivering a bo- uh, delivering safe drinking water to our users and uh, what would go into making a good scalable product that would solve users problem so that was the phase and we obviously started off with zero users but and uh, but to our benefit we started off with a deep user insight and deep understanding of the problem that we were trying to solve yeah and to just add upon so we already had this 5000 water can users right so that was our initial customer base where we started off we because see that was the origin of all drink prime right so we went back uh, because since there was two years lag right i mean we, we we did not had people the same people staying everywhere right so first early 2000 customers were actually from the bottled water water wala platform right so we went because most of the at least in that since 5000 customers which manas was telling 2000 we knew, knew them personally right so i mean we have been delivering water to them and everything right so what we did is we started calling them i mean no social media nothing we had was <laughs> we started calling them and started talking about our uh, drink them as of now also i would say the first 2000 consumers right manas we know them personally right so yeah. the few instances where we go to their home we had dinners with them we went uh, we went and had a party also with them right so so that's the kind of thing so initial days when you are scaling up right i mean 
you just need to understand what is the customer insight right so for that what uh, what what luckily or unknowingly or unknowingly what we done it is we knew them right we knew them what was happening and it was easy for us to understand and go and build the product right when we started off our first version poc we have made a uh, made a gsm version of a purifier right where which was has it having a sim card and all since our consumers were very close to us right we could see what was happening in their homes we saw that gsm connectivity was not coming into the kitchen then we went back to the drawing board to see how can we solve this problem we kind of switched to bluetooth version of a water purifier and and that's how i mean that's where it took another one year time to kind of build the whole product and come right so so initially the customer insights was very much useful and we were lucky enough that all the 2000 customers were our friends so there were days where i went to the customer home sat sat in his home and was writing code in a customer place that was the days where it was in early 2016 17 where customer actually made lunch and dinner for me and fed me i was sitting in his place and, <laughs> and coding so that that was a, that was a good time so that's the only customers are the i think yeah so the fun part about hardware is it uh, i mean it takes a lot of time to stabilize and it behaves differently with different uh, handsets different mobile phones and in different environments and it's not possible for our list starter to replicate all of it in our office so hence we were a lot on the field trying to meet customers trying to debug vijay was looking at it more from a technical side while i was looking at it more from a uh, experience standpoint where are we able to give a seamless experience are we able to make their lives in our small way a little better and those are the early days where uh, yeah uh, we were extremely close to our users even today also we uh, we don't call them users we call them friends and yeah we're lucky to have this journey uh, in this journey some of them have joined us full time in in our mission itself some of them have invested in our company so lucky to have found so many uh, friends along the way and all of it started with us solving a pain point which we believed in for for that uh, for the user group yeah absolutely i think that makes a lot of sense i'm glad that you found those 2000 at least were still sticking on So again, uh, while we are talking about the product evolving, right? Uh, what were the initial expenses? So th- there must have been so many. You are talking about hardware, so uh, you are still coding something in the background to make all this happen, to see to it that it 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 works for you. So what what were the what were your initial expenses? Right. Uh, so so first thing is. Uh, first thing what we have decided once is whatever we had savings right we wanted to kind of put put into the company right so for the for that one thing which we wanted to we made sure is let's make our expenses come down right our personal expenses right so that's when what we did is uh, basically i shifted to manas place we were uh, in a te- uh, in a in a terrace and uh, kind of place right so we went to like from a 2 bhk when we were in amd and all to a single apartment at at, uh, at one for the cost <laughs> to because we wanted to save the cost so that we can invest into the business right so because because each of the purifiers costed a lot of capital for us and then and then initially first first 100 pieces which was close to 10 lakh plus was a was a dream to us right i mean we still did not uh, i mean it was very very difficult at that moment when we uh, wanted that 100 customers also right i mean it was so much uh, co- uh, costly for us right when we had nothing but luckily we had some angels and who were actually our customers who came to us and invested on to us that's that's yeah. uh, wonderful to hear uh, vijay honestly so um, again bo- this is to both of you what was the most important lesson or what were the most important lessons you probably learned along the way especially during the early stages what you are experiencing uh, is experiencing right now is nothing as to what you what you must have experienced when you began right like in your early stages so what were they yeah uh, once just give me a second i'll switch the network manas you can uh, continue i'll just switch the yes. network yes okay uh, manas dropped off uh, just a minute yeah, yeah. he's back so vijay you can switch I hope I'm yes 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 so uh, uh, manas i was asking what were the what is the most important lesson that you learned during the early stage Sorry, Mansa. Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I I think I missed. What was the most important lesson that you uh, learned during the early stage? 
Okay, I uh, yeah, uh, it's fairly simple, right? I would say during the early stage, especially when you're building something, right? It is very important as an entrepreneur to be very close to the problem that you are solving, but never be attached to the solution that you are, uh, that you have come up with, because uh, uh, b because what happens is, I mean, the solution itself, by the nature of it's being a new product, and you you're trying to find product market fit, or you're trying to experiment with a lot of things, you'll go through multiple iterations of uh, of the solution. Uh, so it is very important not to be emotionally attached to the solution, but actually be really vested in the problem and understand users very users and users needs very deeply. It helped that obviously we were the first user of our product, so uh, so obviously we were as close to a user as a, as as we could possibly be. But the one learning that I would like to share with everyone is uh, the solution would change, the approach would change, but the problem that you are solving for and whom you are solving for these two the, these two are constants. So it is very important to internalize this and to be very close to uh, very close to them, and everything okay. else will uh, flow around it. Like in our case, we were not water purification experts. We were not IoT experts. We we just wanted to solve a problem, and because we understood the basics of solving the problem, what a user needs, what is the price point that he is okay paying with, what kind of experience does he get uh, in in other aspects of his life through other technology products, and hence what kind of experience is the minimum part. For us to be able to uh, at least solve, uh, at least make this one headache go away from its life. These all things combined sort of form the pillars of the company that we are running. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, uh, Vijay, maybe you can answer this one. Uh, how do you? Uh, how 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 many? Um, how do so many of the startups fail right after the first growth spurt? As in, we have heard of so many. Like while we are vouching for them, while we are supporting, rooting for them, we still hear of so many startups shutting down. So, like, why do that? Why does that happen? Yeah. So, being a product guy, Mansa, I would say what happens is basically we feel that right as an entrepreneur, we feel that there is some problem in the market, and then we start off trying to solve that problem, right? We develop the product, and uh, because it will be in in this whole journey, what we feel is we we become very close to the product itself, right? We believe that that is our baby, and then this is how the baby has to be, right? So, what will happen is with that mindset, right? You uh, you stop. You stop talking to your user, right? Who is actually the the user of the product? And what happens is, when you don't when you don't do it properly, uh, uh, you feel, you you get started getting offended when when someone gives inputs to your product, right? So that is one of the phases where, in the early stages, when when you are at a zero to one stage, right? You should be absolutely open. So you should be very very hard also in the sense like if you have to kill your baby you have to because if there is no user uh, this right so that is the major thing which i've seen right when i speak to a lot of entrepreneurs what happens is they're so much rigid about their product right that they believe that this is the right product and this is only going to cut it off right though they don't have any users or they don't see any attraction they start getting offended and becoming becoming defending them saying saying that this is the product so that is major major mindset which uh, people have to change uh, and then like 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 we did right we water wallow was very very close to us we had more than six seven thousand consumers but the point is that was not the right solution and it was it it, it took us so long time to even shut it down and because uh, having ha it, it was really yeah. pain where there were days where we were like what is this <laughs> kind of feeling right but that is needed right i mean yeah. you need to be loyal to the problem not to your solution yeah i think that that is a very good thought, uh, Vijay. Uh, be loyal to the problem and not to the solution. Because if you're loyal to the problem, then you'll think of way more ways rather than just one solution, right? If you stick to that one solution, then you're never going to get over that one bit. So I think that definitely like closes that whole growth bit. Now I'm going to your journey bit, right? I want to ask you, how was that journey from 100 to 1 lakh? Again, it was not easy. So tell me how it was and can you tell us uh, can you tell the audience that is some growth strategies that you implemented? I know things were harder because the, there was the pandemic in as such. But then, what were what what were the growth strategies that you implemented along the way while going from hundred to one lakh? Yes. Uh, so first thing, uh, Mansa, what what is one of the major learnings which you have is whenever you grow ten x from the time you are, your company completely evolves. So that is one of the major, major things which we, which we as an entrepreneur learn, right? Like, for example, if you see, if you have to break our journey, it is into two categories, right? One is 100 to 1000. 
thousand to ten thousand, ten thousand to one lakh, right? So I would say there were four instances where we had to completely change the company, right? So for example, when we were at hundred, we were at like four or five people doing everything. Where uh, I mean, growth means everything, marketing, sales, everything put together and all, right? So so like that, where uh, when when you went to a thousand kind of a thing, where we decided to start having a couple of teams which we split, right? So basically, marketing team split into sales and marketing and so many other things, right? So it every stage what happened is the company the company kind of started evolving completely right small problem which was uh, a problem which was there in the early days it used to get magnified when when it comes uh, here right so like when you when you scale it up right so at that point of time you had to start breaking the problem into small chunks and start building their respective teams right so we were a single team when we were 100 now i would say we were close to eight teams now each team having more than 30 people right so so that's the kind of size uh, we have grown through and it's a it's a very very different journey so you need i mean and also this was an important uh, feedback given by one of our one of our mentors right who have done who have done a public listed company also in the past right so he has told me that agenda saying that ki every 10x your company gets evolved first keep an eye on it and start seeing that what else needs to be changed right so so i would say i would quote that key it is a, it is a big it, it is a most important thing which every entrepreneur should keep it when you grow 10x everything will change so so that's what uh, that happened and growth strategies right uh, again in the early days when you see it was most of our customers right then we started off in the next phase of the journey we started off getting more and more referrals uh, so actually uh, i would say till the last last one one and a half year our customers right we were always having more and more customers than we could serve because the point is, since it was a hardware company, figuring out the product and all, right? So we were at least till 2018 ending, we were always having customers abundant than the products which we have, right? So so that was the best thing, which, which was actually giving a product market fit and uh, this thing, right? But once we got in great investors like Sequoia, Surgeon, Umbiar, then we started putting accelerator and that's when we had to change our strategy. Now, it's not just referrals. We wanted more and more customers now to grow faster, right? It's not that the customers were not coming. We wanted many more customers to come in, right? So we, we were we were targeting 10x growth every year. So that's the target. So we that's when we started off with our digital performance marketing. Uh, uh, I mean, we started off with Facebook and then we started growing uh, digitally and, and it helped a lot, right? So as of now, we have also started offline and all other things because point is when you scale you should also at least in your growth channels right there is also there is a starting point and there is also an ending point right so you should be aware of it saying that which channel has how much life so you you cannot just rely on a single channel of growth so it's always your your thing to multiply your channels scale it up and see what is the uh, expiry date of each of the channels also right so are you relevant in that channel whether it's offline whether it's online right so we have added a couple of more channels where and then that's how we are we are able to get a phenomenal change but it is a continuous process right you need to keep evolving new new channels and uh, scaling up right yeah manas anything you'd like to add or uh, should we move on to the yeah. least two yeah uh, so a uh, couple of small points to add. So in early stages of the company, right? Like Vijay rightly mentioned, the company goes through a massive transformation uh, every time we grow a 10x. I've seen that happen again and again, and I've seen that happen in our company very, uh, and also in many other companies that I encounter. So what leads this transformation is the founder's uh, transformation first. The companies in early stages are nothing but a reflection of the thought process of the founder. So as a founder, especially to the young entrepreneurs who are watching this, you would have to evolve continuously. You would have to uh, keep your eye on the goal. You would have to evolve. Every time you need to evolve maybe 10x and then the company follows you to evolve 10x. So that's one thing that uh, that you would have to do. And as the company scales, uh, the value of consistency, the value of predictability in your business starts becoming more and more important. So that's another another point that I would like to add. What starts off as hustle, what starts off as uh, uh, as possibly a hustle acts or uh, gives should give away to processes, should give away to metrics, OKRs, things like that, and all of these things start becoming extremely important as you as you go through the journey. Absolutely, I think definitely makes a lot of sense. Uh, both of you put that together. So. Uh, while scaling up there's always challenges right what were some of the challenges that you faced if you could take like a minute and tell me what were the challenges 
yeah uh, so so one of the challenges uh, uh, so which we were facing right so the first thing was uh, as i told you one of the challenge was on the uh, hardware uh, thing itself right which i was talking about where we had to move from a gsm to a bluetooth version where we had to evolve the product completely right so so that was that was a channel but i mean by then we have installed 200 200 plus uh, kind of purifiers but then we had to go back and we had to change change everything right and the next phase of the challenge which we happened to face was in covid right covid was a big big surprise to us where what happened is i mean uh, it, it's just a day before they told that your operations is going to be shut down right i mean we are a real world company where people are reliant at least when we started the pandemic we were having more than 10000 consumers right who were actually actually reliant on us right but when government said that everything is shut down right that was that was one of the huge challenges where we couldn't do leaving about the company per se right but majorly on our customer side because customers were reliant on our drinking water right I and mean, if something something goes uh, i mean uh, this thing that was a huge huge challenge where Actually, Manas, Manas had did a great job there. What, what, what he has done is, um, I mean, uh, he went with a couple of technicians to the commissioner office and then he, we actually got in some, uh, some permission uh, from the commissioner to kind of uh, get the operations going, right? Because we, we told our, our issues that 10,000 people were reliant on us and we got, uh, we got that permission to operate, right? That is one of the challenges which we face. The second major challenge is what our manufacturing was completely based out in pune right so we our maharashtra was was one of the places where complete our device manufacturing was happening right but uh, as you know in the first uh, phase of pandemic maharashtra was completely uh, struck and everything was closed right that is the major point where uh, at, at some moment of time there were close to 5000 customers waiting and then we did not have even a single purifier to deploy right so that was a problem where we realized that putting eggs in one single basket is not the right approach and it hit us very hard i mean it, it took us down for at least one to two months right so that's when what we did is we started diversifying our manufacturing also so as of now we have close to five plus manufacturing partners across india right so at any point of time if some lockdowns happen we are, we are sure that some or the other will, will kind of uh, get, get us right so that's the big thing which we had to learn but it hit us it it has but point is uh we have come out and figured out in the second lockdown when it happened right we were very seamless right there's no not a, not even a single problem which we faced right because we were really very ready with this these were a couple of issues which was very much big when when we got the issue and then we didn't know what to do but somehow uh, there were people who helped us and somehow we got over those issues absolutely manas any any challenges that you you want to talk about separate from this so yeah, uh, I mean, like Vijay rightly, so like Vijay rightly mentioned, right? Uh, I mean, in the initial phases of our journey, the biggest challenge that we were facing, uh, the biggest challenge that we were facing was access to capital. Since we had, I mean, our business is to uh, install water purifiers in customers' homes and charge them for the amount of water that they consume. Someone had to fund the water purifiers. So getting that, uh, getting the, uh, getting the debt funding piece in place and uh, took a lot of time for us because we did not obviously come from wealthy families. Uh, we ha uh, and the business did not have enough uh, uh, enough uh, weightage to show for itself. But again, we got a few believers, we started building from there. So that's how we, we solved that. Again, COVID, uh, everything sort of reset. And that was the time actually we were extremely lucky to have the support of some of the best investors in the ecosystem, some of the best in uh, mentors out there. Without all of their support, uh, it would have been much, much difficult. But with all of their support and all of their wise counsel, it was uh, it was relatively easier for us to navigate the ever fast changing environment that COVID had caused for us. So yeah, these were some of the challenges that we faced, and yeah, we continue to face challenges. Um, <laughs> since uh, since uh, it's a hardware business, there are obviously challenges of production. There are obviously challenges of uh, uh, of operations. There are obviously challenges of how else can we uh, how else can we improve the user experience how else can what else can we do so we we do face all of these challenges and now we are uh, we anticipate some of the challenges as the business sort of grows as we also evolve through as entrepreneurs instead of reacting to most of the challenges we have begun to anticipate challenges which we will face in the next 3 to 6 months and have started taking actions today so that uh, yeah i mean the challenges don't get easier only thing is that we get slightly better in solving yes. them as we go yes. through the journey. Absolutely. 
so again i think uh, manas this could be a question to you uh, how so you have you have other than bangalore uh, you are actually uh, your, your main office you have uh, you have reached out to you have expanded to hyderabad as well as delhi and cr yeah. so how do you uh, what made you expand there and how do you identify these potential uh, cities right as in locations for example so we around what 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 where did the work what kind of income did they earn what were the lifestyle choices that they made and where else did the did similar users like that exist in india and what we found out that uh, i mean uh, most of our users used to work i mean still work in technology or technology related fields and earn a certain income level and when we uh, went back and sort of looked at india and saw where 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 can we find most uh, most of these users that's when these two uh, the ncr belt and hyderabad sort of popped up and we uh, and that's how we decided to expand our, our base to, to uh, these regions i think it makes sense vijay would you like to add anything to this yeah another thing was obviously on the strategy side right manza so first thing is we had a strategy to kind of capture uh, south india right so that's where proxim because of the proximity and the type of people uh, we had right so that's where that's where also it made a logical sense for us to go to hyderabad because there are other uh, similar kind of customer base and uh, that's also the proximity is very near and all the people are exactly like the way uh, people in bangalore right so that's where we can easily capture capture the whole uh, south part of it easily going there but also we wanted to touch the waters on that side of it because that is also another side of it which is the central and the north side of it right so uh, i mean the the demography was very much true that um, we were getting the same it crowd there but obviously there are a lot of learnings which we are we are still going through when you compare uh, i mean uh, people in delhi ncr with uh, i mean bangalore and hyderabad right so 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 that was in a strategy where we really wanted to go little away because we wanted to, it's it's always better to uh, i mean get to a problem i mean try to try to at least understand what are all the potential problems in the future you could have right then then solving the problems which you already know so that's where that was one of the strategic decision where if you want to go to pan india let's let's have a footprint a very different footprint uh, than the current cities to see uh, whether what are the learnings there right and and it was absolutely a good strategy for us because we had immense learning uh, going there side right women the way we operated with the, the the way we kind of deliver and install right everything as of now is very very different right as our product is also customizable even our services became customizable right where the technicians were delivering and tele delivering the purifier and also in, in installing the purifiers right so that was also happening in 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 bangalore we had delivery teams operate and installation teams operate but in ncr it was both yeah. of them were doing together and everyone right so so in that sense uh, even the product and the operations also for city of the city started changing right i mean though we have a playbook of taking it to multiple cities but the playbook also had a, a local variant of uh, of that right even in the customer acquisition when you see local language uh, coming in and also uh, like telugu in hyderabad we had to and in kannada in uh, uh, bangalore and there in uh, hindi right so we started marketing and all these things in the local languages right so there were there were a lot of uh, things which we have learned and uh yeah as as it scales we'll be learning much more absolutely so again a very operational uh, question right so it's hard to manage inventory it's it's a known fact and given that your hardware that is all there is so how do you ensure these availability you know you have manufacturing units elsewhere like in five uh, five different places right now but what about the products right like the raw items that go into your uh, uh, manufacturing so how do you ensure that is available at all times right so one thing is see uh, for, for for this problem especially right the, the only thing which can help you is a technology right so because point is if you can if you don't use technology properly it is it is very very difficult problem to crack right because you don't know see there are so many stakeholders in this in, in this product right there is a manufacturer there is a delivery technician there is an in house in house team who will be managing the spares there will be customers where our purifiers will be installed and and then the, there are different cities also right i mean that that is a third dimension to the problem right so unless unless you have technology supporting you right you really cannot solve this problem right and that's where from the early days itself right we started building our erp systems and everything right i mean 
we have done a, a very great job in in the in the inventory management side right so we have qr codes on each of the each of the important components of our purifiers right so each of the components whenever we are getting uh, to the whenever, whenever it is getting manufactured not just the purifier right each component in the purifier has a qr code right so when when i scan that code i know exactly where all this component went right when did it start manufacturing when did it kind of uh, where is it right now right so that's the that's the kind of level of technology we had to evolve because the the major problem is the inventory is directly proportional to the money here if you lose a single pump or single filter it is directly money which is you are losing right so so that where i mean if you see there are com some components which are costing more than 1500 only a single component the point is if you don't track it well if you just lose 100 of it it is a, it is a huge loss to the company right so uh, technology is the only way to solve this and uh, without that having excels and all will not scale up it, it is it's going to be difficult and so we cracked it there's still a lot of things to do but we are currently able to track each and every component which we have in the system uh manas would you add something or uh, shall we move on to the next yeah uh, nothing much to add here uh, except for the fact that uh, i mean uh, we also understood the risks of the supply chain at the right time and also mm. uh, I mean, did the right kind of investment in relationships, especially with the right kind of suppliers, so that we are able to maintain just in time inventory. Wherein we don't store a lot of inventory, uh, we are possibly one of the leanest operations around because of the relationships that we have with our suppliers and because of the uh, amazing team that, uh, that, that takes care of us from the production standpoint, who is responsible Absolutely. for holding those relationships. Right? That's great. So again, uh, talk to me about your partners, right? Your delivery agents, your technicians. How does that? How do you manage them? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so for, for delivery agents and uh, and for technicians, right? That that is also a piece that is continuously evolving as we go from uh, as we get deeper into a city as uh, as our operations sort of evolve. For example, like Vijay rightly said, when we enter into a city, both delivery and operations were used to be clubbed together simply because of the simplicity of it. And as uh, and as we are uh, and as uh, and as we go ahead, no, as we scale in the city, the entire piece, which is delivery and operations, first of all, they get demers between uh, 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 between delivery and operations. Then inside the operations itself, again, uh, we we again form separate pods. One is for inst installing the product, specialist pod for installing the product, a specialist pod for general service. Because installations team do not carry space with them, the space are already in the box. But a general service team, there will be an element of inventory both forward and reverse. Then obviously there are tech. The tech plays a huge role. Everything is tech enabled. The entire inventory is tracked on the technicians app, and also we have made intelligent workflows so that the ramping up time of technicians on our platform gets reduced for example if a new partner joins us he gets step-by-step -step instruction on the app itself what is the next set of steps he has to follow and obviously we have a support infra for them wherein if they face any concerns there are their circle managers there are the uh, tech uh, the trainers and uh, whom they can call or reach out to in addition to this we do conduct regular training for uh, for, uh, for our uh, partner force we uh, and we do also try to see from more from a non transactive standpoint how can we support them for example a uh, couple of recent things that we were uh, that we were experimenting with uh, is i mean uh, these uh, our partners travel a lot of distance uh, in a day maybe 100 kilometers or maybe more in a day uh, one small suggestion that came from the team is can we provide them free bike service we may not cost us a lot but would help them immensely and especially since they travel uh, all around in bikes, if the bike goes down even for a day, they lose their livelihood for a day. Similarly, can we provide them health insurance? We did provide them with COVID insurance. We did provide them with we do provide them with health insurance. Now we are looking at possibilities. Can we ensure the insurance coverage to their entire immediate family as well? So it's all about treating people fairly. It's all about uh, it's it's all about. Uh, how I mean, how can we look at them also as a consumer and start moving for their needs as well? So yeah, I mean, we don't look at partners only as partners, but also look at them as a consumer for a very important part of our business. We do have service with them, whether they are happy with us, and it it starts from there. Makes a lot of sense, uh, Manas. So again, I'm going to ask you about your team, right? Like you said, you were very small when you started. It was just both of you, and then you grew. Now you are eight teams across maybe 
uh, close to 30 people in each team. How has that happened? Like what was, uh, how, why did that happen? And why uh, did that happen? Because you also grew as an entrepreneur. Did that help with your growth, uh, your team growing? So can you just talk about your entrepreneurship growth as well as your team growth as well there? Sure. So uh, in the initial phases of the journey, right, I'd like to break it down into two, two parts. One is before you get funding. Second is after you get funding. So before you get funding, uh, you need believers on your side, wherein people who <clears throat> who are ready to, uh, who, who believe in the journey so much that, uh, uh, that and in the problem so much that when difficult days come, they, uh, they, uh, they will not abandon ship and who are ready to uh, uh, leave whatever they were doing and sort of join you full time in, in, in the mission. We are extremely lucky to have an, uh, almost all of our core team members still continuing with us today who were the first five people to join the company. We are, we are extremely lucky to have that and, and over, over a course of time, uh, yeah, and after you get money, right? Typically, uh, entrepreneurs, what happens is they, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the key to scaling up after you get funding is to hire people better than yourself in all methods, which means you may have to pay people more than you pay yourself. You may have to give them more responsibility, more authority, more power than that you give yourself. You will have to trust them more than you trust yourself, right? So, yeah, uh, so both of these things uh, is what I can say, zero to one team building and one to ten team building. Right. Yeah. Uh, to just add one point, right? I mean, it's been always a journey, a fun for us actually being an entrepreneur to kind of step aside and give the driving seat to someone else, right? In the sense, like on that respective team, because we believe that the team which we have hired, right, are much more, very much efficient in their work than us. And, and it's always fun to learn from them, right? I mean, especially coming from a different background, which we have, we don't have a complete background about the whole company building, right? So for me, marketing, sales, finance is all very different because I've, I've never been in that journey, being a techie and all, right? So, so it's always good to get the team who are much more enabled and much more uh, better than you and learning from them right that that's been a, a, a fantastic journey but one thing uh, one thing which have important happens is basically as we are building uh, people and uh, things right we always try to make sure that uh, people kind of contribute uh, see what there is a single uh, single phase which we kind of use it in the company right so we want people to do what can what they can only do right and whatever others can do right try to offload it to the other people right so so that's the kind of that's the important thing which we do because most of the times people what happens is they do 80 percent of the time doing the redundant jobs which any any other one any other person can also do right like maybe who's a much more junior uh, i mean i'm talking about the senior management when when that task can be done by a junior. I mean, uh, you can get some junior below you and get it done, right? But you do only which only you can do, right? So that's where that's where the whole value uh, proposition uh, will increase a lot, and then that's where the value for the company also increase, right? So even we believe something saying that we want to do which only we can do, and something which can be done by others, right? We try to uh, get get the things done by it right so that that's that's been a, a very important learning for us where uh, that helps you unless you get out of your shoes uh, you cannot grow to the next level right so uh, that that's that's been one learning before being from hands-on going even to the customer home and trying to install the purifier to come to the stage where team will take care is is a big thing as an entrepreneur right i mean it takes a lot of uh, self uh, i mean evolution actually i mean yes. to, to kind of go to that stage absolutely Again, Vijay, this is a question to you, right? It involves a lot of tech and I'm sure Manus also can add on. How has technology evolved at Drink Prime? Like where where were you as to what you where you are right now? I think Manus dropped off. I'm just bringing him on. Okay. So um, again, uh, what I was saying is how has technology evolved over time at uh, Drink Prime? And what other role does technology play, right, in your, in your system? Where, do you, right. where else do you use it? Right. So Mansa, our thing was uh, basically, uh, to be frank, right, we always saw technology, uh, we were uh, technology, uh, not agnostic kind of company, right. So basically, from the roots of the company, 
we were very much confident on that whatever the technology is needed to solve the consumer right we we were able to learn it right from coming from a very different background uh, manas and me were coming from a complete software background right so we kind of ended up learning hardware and then got into right so technology was always always a, a, a way of solving the problem to us we were not sticking to any of one the technology we were always looking at which technology is the is the right technology to the uh, to the consumers right so that's been always a our mantra on technology right so first what we done it is we used to identify the problem what is the problem and then go back to what technology to use it to solve the problem right uh, yeah yeah uh, mansa i can't see you so yeah yeah so so that that's been the stage uh, coming evolving the product from uh, i would say from a gsm purifier to a bluetooth purifier and also next the the, the major shift happened with our uh, complete customization story right so what happened is i mean once once we launched it in 2018 we realized that actually in the purifier industry one size fit all is not the solution right because each of the water quality in each of the areas were different to just give you an example bangalore bangalore has like three different water Water sources, right? One is uh, municipality, one is borewell, one is tanker, right? At any point of time, the water to a consumer is very different from the water uh, in the next area, right? Every ten kilometers, we have seen that the water water table completely changes, right? So, one of the major things what happened as a realization is a one size fit all, which is a traditional water purifiers, right? We kind of went away from that. Where currently, with the help of technology, because we collect a lot of data, we we collect we have a lot of sensors inside a water. Purifier, which will be continuously streaming data to us, right? With that technology, we are able to customize our water purifier, right? So, as I speak, every purifier which we give to the consumer is a personalized purifier to that consumer, right? So, whether whether it is RO based, whether it is non-RO based, whether it's UV based, right? Depending on the input water quality of the customer, we kind of completely. Uh, customize the water purifier and give it right and unless this iot is not evolved properly right our business model would not have evolved right so the iot is i would say is the enabler or is the heart of our uh, technology right so unless we have our purifiers getting connected the data getting shipped to us and also helps the consumer to track how many liters he is consuming it also helps us to kind of uh, charge the consumer on what is his consumption right so technology in many ways was is the backbone and still will be the backbone of the company right so it also helped our technicians to see what is the routing to do what is the best way where i can we can manage people to uh, kind of do more output uh, uh, from the single technician it also helped us to save spares right for example when we are uh, when we are kind of uh, changing filters right which filter to change so that because all the cost is on us right i mean if you go and change all the filters right the cost for the thing is we need to track how many liters got consumed from each of these filters and then in any way right any any problem statement if you take in drink prime it's completely backed up by technology there is a technology solution where it is coming and solving it right because we are scaling rapidly it cannot be a manual intervention technology has to come in each and every area and for us that is the dna absolutely manas again um, as a closing i want to talk about the personal uh, present as uh, current uh, company growth right what do you think of it uh, what has been the what is the overall thought process behind where you want the company to be in the next few years and what do you think about the current situation yeah so i'll start off with the current situation right so uh, all of us have uh, i mean more many industries have seen downturn because of covid over the last two years all of us expected the covid journey to be smaller and yeah uh, it beta expectations that lasted more than two two and a half years so we are also seeing uh, the signs of uh, covid uh, covid reducing it is still there we still have to be cautious but yeah we do see uh, people coming back into the city we do see people uh, moving from city to city we do see people upgrading or changing their homes all of this gives us a opening to be present in people's lives because there is some some change that is happening and whenever change happens i mean uh, and obviously with covid uh, one thing that has come up is the consciousness about health and safety so uh, so with all of this happening in the in the macro environment we see a in uh, we are very bullish on our uh, medium term growth plans wherein we uh, we uh, in, in the in the next uh, in the next 
one year at least we expect to grow between four to or four to six times of our current user base and uh, and possibly we, we are there in uh, uh, across three major metropolitan areas maybe in uh, adding one or two more major metropolitan areas the long term vision of the company of course is in the next uh, in the next five years uh, in, in the next three years rather uh, we want to be present and serving at least a million customers and slowly start to explore what are the other problems that a consumer is facing at their home which can uh, which we can solve for them sorry i was on mute. i think that makes a lot of sense um uh, vijay this is for you how do you set targets for yourself right what is your goal very much related to the um company uh, goal as well so how do you set that target for yourself right uh, so we have a very different strategy uh, mansa manas and me i mean very uh, have a completely different strategy how how we run the company right so manas is a completely hands on person where uh, basically uh, the the current 6 months of the company right is completely run by manas right so all the teams who are currently reporting uh, and who who have to i mean have to do the current 6 months right is completely the, the the parts of the teams report to manas i completely work on a very different tangential direction that what next after the 6 months right so that's the kind of direction uh, which i take it's 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 that we are hands on in all the teams it's not that we are only working with all the teams my my point is after 6 months how each of the team should evolve right so so that's that's the kind of strategy which we use and we work across with all the teams right manas scales up tries to grow 15 to 20% month on month for the next 6 months that's that's he is completely focusing post for me every after 6 months how each of the teams has to evolve and how is the next growth coming right so that's the that's the kind of problem statements uh, which we do as a pers- as a question which you asked what is a personal thing which uh, which you have done it is one thing which you have learned very much uh, in the journey is basically that you can have deficiencies you can have problems but you should make sure that your company doesn't have those problems right so so basically it could be the point that the kind of person i am right i am uh, being a techie i mean you see very techies not so much organized and they 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 sit they sit and code and they they need that creativity freedom right so un, unless you have that right i mean you cannot you cannot build something out of the box so what happens is sometimes your things become problem to the company right so the the thing is you uh, It, that should be the major problem which you should you should be aware right whatever your problems whatever your strengths whatever your weakness right should should not be kind of your company's things what is right for the company has to be done right whether you know or not you figure out a way where the company should have that whether you don't have it also right so that's been a personal thing i have been there there have been so many instances where i'm still learning there's so many things which i'm still learning but i make sure that the company kind of that that thing which uh, if i don't know also the company doesn't have a problem right once i get there i start learning from the team right so that that's been always my focus i i i don't want it to become a blocker for the company ever right so Absolutely. so that's the important thing which, uh, which uh, kind of i it always keeps me grounded to understand whether am i blocking something or not so so th- sure. that's the personal goal i think manas you too before we close uh, please tell me what are your goals and how like Uh, Vijay explained how does that sort of fall in line with the company goals. So uh, I feel that I mean, like I said earlier as well, uh, a founder's growth and the company's growth, at least in the early and the middle stage of the company, are very closely related. So my personal goal is how can I learn from the most successful founders around? <clears throat> Today we are lucky to have access to some of the most uh, uh, most successful founders in our ecosystem. How can I spend time with them? How can I learn with them? Obviously, books, podcasts, all of these things do help tremendously. How can I evolve? How can I learn from the best so that I can possibly uh, try to emulate some of that in our dream time scenario? Not blindly copy anyone. Every company is unique. Every DNA is unique. But uh, the best practices, some, uh, some the best practices, uh, and uh, and the way that. possibly our company sir run some of it are standardized and some of it can be called as a science so my personal goal is how can i uh, how can i learn more and how can i do uh, how can i get better and from a company standpoint i i mean my job in the company is fairly simple i would like to think of myself as the chief unblocking officer i try to figure out uh, how i can i mean if i can see uh, who is getting blocked or uh, who uh, and how can i help them if there is a way that i can help people uh, 
I mean, uh, help people uh, because people, like I said, uh, I mean, uh, people have a tendency to uh, not only do their job but also look at overlook at the shoulders, thinking if the other person is doing the job. Especially in a scale up phase, it is very important for everyone to focus on their metrics and hope that the other party comes through, uh, uh, comes through with with their metrics. So that's my uh, job in a nutshell to ensure that people don't get unblocked. They have clarity on what they need to achieve, and if I've provided them with enough resources and tools to achieve. I think that's wonderful, Manas. Uh, thank you, Vijay, as well. We have come to the end of the session. This was, again, very, uh, I think, what we covered in the first session was very basic. We covered about uh, the journey and as a whole about uh, the business part of it, right? Here, we learned so much more, so much more intricacies into building, scaling a business. So thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we look forward to hosting you both again. Thank you to our audience. We know we got a few questions. We, I tried to uh, sort of mix it up with the questions we already have. So any other questions, you can obviously reach out to any of them offline through LinkedIn, that is, and get that uh, uh, sorted. So thank you once again, Manas and Vijay. This was wonderful. Thank you to our audience. Please catch us on our next event. We are doing something end of uh, April. So um, uh, once again, thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.